Like most writers, I often wonder about the life that might exist, that must exist, I suppose, for characters I've created once the final full stop has been applied at the end of a story. Unless the protagonist dies on the last page, there has to be a fictional life beyond that of the one that's been described by the author. That's surely a given. Most stories, long or short, will arrive at some predetermined resolution point. But that doesn't mean that the character's journey is over. There is always another chapter, the next step taken, an untold tale to be recounted. Characters live independently of the story. All writers are eminently conscious of this, which is why you will often hear them talk of losing control of what a character might say or do within the context of the story. This idea of characters assuming autonomous agency, somehow shaping their lives and determining their own outcome, has always fascinated me. I am a writer who believes implicitly that meticulous plotting of a story is futile when you're dealing with characters into whom you have hopefully breathed real life and who are invested in their own sense of narrative freedom. They have histories and backstories, and if this is the case, they must surely have undisclosed futures too, destinies that neither the author nor the reader can see, but which both know almost certainly exist. Out there, somewhere in the vast fictional space from which characters and their ongoing stories are drawn. This brings me, via a rather circuitous route, to the man in the field, and the evolution of what was originally a 3,000-word story written for a collection of mine entitled Scar Tissue, published last month by PS Publishing. That initial short story is essentially the first chapter of the expanded version you now hopefully have in your hands. The question I suppose that is most obvious from a reader's point of view is why did I feel the need to develop a story that was, as far as these things ever can be, already resolved and locked into another project altogether. To which, my immediate answer would be, what makes you think I had a choice? Many of those people who read the original short story provided positive feedback and generally loved the strange world that I had created in The Man in the Field. But nearly all of them finished reading the tale and after due consideration sent me a message asking, what the hell happens next? It was a question that had been plaguing me too. Mother Tanner and Father Lynch, even in such a relatively short space, had acquired compelling lives of their own and had taken root beyond my imagination. Or so it seemed. My mind kept drifting back to this short tale, which I had originally written as a tribute to Shirley Jackson, urging me to consider what steps these characters might have taken next. <laughs> 